Oh, if we could kill Homelander. How would you do it? S bomb. <laughs> That's bomb. Uh, uh, Karen, you, mm. how would you... Man, how would I kill? I mean, I've got to do the claws, you know? Kimiko's claws? Yeah. Or the face rip! There we go, the face rip. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how about you, Les? I, I would do it very, very slowly. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a part of me that still kind of resents that even though I'm mother's milk, I have to share the milk obsession with him. Drown him. Drown him in milk. I should drown him in milk, right? Right. Drown, drown his ass in milk. <laughs> yeah, and Dominique, this is, this is your partner. This is your, you know, your, your compatriot. Well, yeah. Uh -huh. it, yeah. Dom, you could kill him the way Popclaw killed uh, that landlord. I uh, he specified uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Ooh, that's a fate that uh, <laughs> I don't know if I want to shoot that scene. <laughs> um, well, that's the thing about Homelander, he's so powerful that I think people would have to join forces to take that guy down. He's, yeah, the problem is getting close. Yeah, getting close enough yeah. to really, you can bruise his ego, yeah. I mean, that's a good start. <laughs> But if you were as fast as the blue streak down the end, that wouldn't be a problem, but he's part of the problem anyway, right? Yeah, he sure is. Yeah. yeah. How you doing, Jesse? Hey, man, good to see you. How would you kill Homelander? Ah, uh, how would I kill Homelander? Uncharacteristically, I'd probably try to kill him really slow as well. That's kind of impossible. Be like, yeah, yeah I would, I, it would take some effort to yeah. slow it down, but I, I would, yeah. I feel like he's tortured A-Train for a long time. He's got it coming. You know, I would I would take my time and pick them apart piece by piece. He wants to know if your characters, in your opinion, are worthy to handle Thor's hammer, Mjolnir. Oh. Oh. Worthy oh. Of Thor's hammer. Yeah. You know what you have to be in order to lift Thor's hammer, right? I've not seen Thor. <laughs> no. You know. You know what? I think. I think Mother's Milk has the moral compass to be able to not only lift Thor's hammer, but also wield Excalibur. I think he's that guy. Yeah, it's my opinion. I tell you right now, A Train wouldn't be able to. to <laughs> not even a little bit, man. Thor's hammer might even do one of these. <laughs> He's not, a -Train's not being able to pick it up. I guarantee you that. Yeah, yeah. I got faith in Dominique, though. Yeah, I feel in, like in Queen Ma, May. take on the hammer. Yeah. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> I, I think you're the only one that got that? I got it now. My eyes lit up, I was like, whoa! <laughs> I just I didn't even mean it. Hey, you can take on the hammer, sheesh! I, I, I write that on the notes. I, mean, I think Karen would surprise us and she'll be able to lift that hammer. I will lift that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm worthy. Yes, you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm not gonna piss you off. For Dominique, I remember his second season. We were shooting the last scene, the mm -hmm. big, big action sequence. It was freezing cold. Yeah. And Dominique went into set. She's uh, Girls Get It Done scene, if you've seen it. And boy, she took that rob off, and it was so cold, and you yeah. kicked ass, and I was looking on the side, like, girls, do you get it down? <laughs> the most genuine line I ever said, because I saw you, like, you, don't, you didn't give a damn. You were, you were a superhero, man. Yeah, I felt the same way. I had a, I had a, uh, a fanboy moment, because I never worked with Dominique ever season one, and season two, that scene was the only one that we were ever on screen together. And I remember when, uh, when she came on set, and, and I had only seen her once before that in person out of costume. So I had never seen Queen May. I hadn't met Queen May yet, and the day she showed up on set, and she was like taller than me, the hair, the, all the, the wrist joints, I was like, damn. <laughs> 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 It, 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 you feel it. Yeah. That's cool. Absolutely. What line or scene surprised you the most when you first read it in the script? Mm. Scene is Everybody's looking at me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're looking at you, lads. You got a story on that one. So, so, uh, <laughs> the, the episode six, season two, where I get strangled by a penis scarf. <laughs> 
Let's just get the elephant in the room out of the way already. Um, it wasn't, I wasn't always getting scran strangled by the penis scarf, okay? In the first uh, edition of that script, all I did was see it on a monitor and say, damn, brother got a love sausage. And that's it, that's where it ended. <laughs> by the time they rewrote and rewrote and revised that scene, all of a sudden, now it ends up, you know, we have a little wrestling match, me and Love Sausage. But I didn't know anything about it, and these guys, they read every re ver version of the new, I, I only read the original version, and then I focus on the episode we're working on. I can't live in two episodes at a time. Well, then Carl comes in the makeup trailer, and I'm sitting there, I'm half asleep, and he's like, so are you ready for your big moment? I'm like, what big moment? And he's like, your moment with love sausage. And he does his little butcher face. <laughs> and I'm like, you're not going to get me today. Because he's, he's a practical joker. He always likes to make people start feeling, you know, worried about stuff. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. And then Frenchie comes in, and Frenchie comes in, and he's, he's the life of the party in the morning. Like, it could be four in the morning call time. He shows up with his speaker, French rap blasting. He's in his own world. And, and he's like, ask Frenchie. And so I asked Frenchie, and he's like, yeah, you get strangled by lip sawfish. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I see what's going on here. Karen comes in, same thing. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna happen. <laughs> and so I'm like, I love these voices. They, they, think, <laughs> they, they think I'm stupid. Like, they ganged up on me. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, beat up on Mother's Milk Day. That's cool. I go back to my trailer and I ask, you know, one of the PAs to bring me a new copy of the script. And when I read that shit, I was like, why me? <laughs> of all the, this, he would have loved it. He would have sat there. Frenchie would have like made love to that thing. So anyway, a hundred memes later. <laughs> love sauce. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> yeah, well, and that's what we'd like to know in season three. Is that going to be top without any spoilers? Is season three, or are we going to have something worse than that? Everything from season one and season two was topped in season three. Oh, my God. I agree. Very true. Well, let your imagination yeah. Yeah. go with that one. Everything, Everything. was topped. Oh. <laughs> Who do you think would win in a fight, Omni-Man or Homelander? Ooh. Ooh. That's like the great debate right now, isn't it? Like a lot of people are wondering, who do you guys think would win in a fight between Omni Man and Homelander? Oh, and shit. Oh, 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 shit, I'm right, telling you. I'm about to call right now. I'm going to get into your I, I absolutely do. Jesse, two episodes only? You got to be kidding, dude. Listen, man, we've been filming for nine, like eight months. I don't have time. <laughs> but like, now they're like, you know, we're almost done. Uh, I will definitely catch up on that series because so far I'm, I'm really interested. Okay, well let me tell you what happens at the end. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, Omni Man would kick Homelander's ass. Wow. What is that? Maybe the that's reason? how we get rid of him. Uh, what? What's the reason? What's the reason? Yeah, what? Homelander is Homelander is not <laughs> What? No, bro, Homelander is like Guys, guys, guys. They haven't seen season three yet. They don't know. <laughs> they don't they know. Change your mind after season three. Yeah, we'll have this conversation again next year. Okay. Oh, that's fair. Have this Homelander what? Homelander is still here. Boom! Oh, boom! Oh, boom! That's a valid point. Sir, get out. <laughs> <laughs> he destroys the world? Listen, at the end of the day, both of them are superheroes, so I don't give a mm about any of them. They can kill each other. I'll be happy with that. Uh, yeah. Spoken like Frenchie for sure. Yeah, like, yeah Frenchie coming through. Yeah. <laughs> We're not all bad, Frenchie. Some of us are nice. My questions are for the ladies. Um, because I feel in season two, you guys really stepped up how powerful women are. Mm. And I wanted to know, did you feel as powerful as we felt? Because I had goosebumps. Mm. So I just want to know if you felt it, because I felt it. Wow. wow. I mean, yes and no. I think uh, for Kimiko, at least, in the beginning of the season, she's going through a lot with uh, Kenji and uh, the feeling of grief and loss. And so she almost loses hope but then at the end the girls do get it done and uh, she, de she defeats 
storm front with everyone else. Um, so yeah, no, I think even filming that, despite the cold, um, it felt good, you know, it felt good to beat up Stormfront finally and get my revenge and all of that. Um, so yeah, and also to answer my, someone else's question about my favorite quote, uh, I say to Stormfront, I think in the final episode, I say, I'm going to stick my boot up her Nazi kitty. And so that is my favorite line. Oh, nice, nice. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, I, um, I, I, loved, I loved the finale of season two and it aligned with Maeve's storyline of, 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 um, of the start of her stepping back into her own power as the strong woman that she once was. Um, we didn't really see that at the beginning of season one because she was just so jaded and, and cynical. Um, so, so yeah, it was, um, it was an exciting place to get to, especially when you see the start, the beginning of that whole theme, Girls Get It Done, and how it almost seems subversive in a way and not particularly um, feminist. But it, it morphed into that, you see it at the end, you see the, the, the empowerment that, um, that those women have, and it's cool. It's cool to see, and um, yeah. Uh, on the set, behind the scenes, how, and this is for all of you, um, how do you guys feel about Carl Urban's liberal use of the C word? <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, I think the C word is fine when you're foreign, but when you're American, it just suddenly it's becomes... Like abrupt, yeah. <laughs> but when Carl says it, it's kind of nice. You know? It's kind of cool, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like a, in a loving way, so I get it, yeah. Not so bad. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's an interesting question. There's certain words that should never be said. Uh, there are words that I'm discovering that are, are offensive, to be honest with you. There are words I'm discovering that are being offensive to you. Um, so whose idea was it? Uh, how conscious-minded was he of the C word? And then when he decided to put it into the script, and then when you get up with Carl and say, you're saying this word, what were the reactions from all sources? in the script, right? Yeah, I think, yeah, that was all, all through the script. Um, I mean, to be honest, <laughs> you know, the words that are, you know, wrapping up the C word, <laughs> like, you yeah. feel at home, it's like, it's not, you know, but yeah. <laughs> I'll go, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> I remember season one, though, uh, they would, some of the notes we would get was, can you not say MF? Can you use less MFs? Like we have a certain that. number of S words and F words and MF words that we can use per episode. Right. And then by like episode three, they just stopped trying. Yeah, they stopped trying. That was it. Like, they stopped trying. And we I remember that too. They used to like come up all the time and be like, hey, you know, per scripted or whatever, we only have a certain amount of like this that we can say, or if you're gonna say damn, like you can't put like God in front of it. Like it was all these things. And then, Literally halfway through the when season, went, yeah, it was like, hey, could you add in just a sprinkle a couple more in there? <laughs> hey, whatever you feel, you know what I mean? I think they just gave up. They realized that they were, that we were losing something without that because right. the show is so heavy, you know, like, it, it is. It's a lot. It was just, it didn't feel right to be in those scenarios and everything that was happening around us for us to not react appropriately. We understand there are certain things you can't say, but when it's already been out in the press, and I'm sure your bosses know, well, yeah, okay, well, you know, let it go. What can you tell us about any new characters we're going to see in season three? Well, I mean, obviously you're asking about Soldier Boy, Jim, played by Jensen Apple, who is amazing and a monster on screen and off. He's, he's a brilliant, brilliant guy bring so much empathy and nuance and intelligence to the role. Um, I mean, all I can say is, is we have our work cut out for us with him. We have our hands beyond full. He's, he's a force to be reckoned with, you know? And if you follow the comics and you kind of know Soldier Boy's history, you'll see that um, it, it really challenged us. You know, last year, or last season rather, uh, Stormfront, you know, what was, was extremely uh, difficult to kind of first figure out and then, mm -hmm. um, you know, tackle as, as, as that supervillain that season. 
Well, with Soldier Boy, you know, there's not any time to figure him out. You know, he he comes in swinging for the fences, and that's that's the that's the challenge that kind of raised the bar this season. Mm. So, we were hoping mm. before the season started to outdo season two, and I you know what I don't know what you guys think, but I think we outdid season by far one and two put together. Yeah, by far my favorite season for sure. Wow. Hands down. I think, you know, it's difficult to say anything about Soldier Boy without giving an, you know, giving something away from season three. But I will say that Jensen off screen has fit right in with the boys. Um, we had so much fun. He's really fun, easy to get along with. And he, I think you're the one that told me he didn't know how to play backgammon. He, Coming he in, pretended. He pretended and he then he whooped it. all our asses. He was faking. And he, he, the first day he came on set and played backgammon, he lost. He lost against everyone. And that's when I pulled Karen to the side. I was like, I, I, think, he's, I think he's playing possum. <laughs> I was like, look at him. Something's off. Like, he's acting right now. And sure enough, that motherfucker could play. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Michael Shanks, and you're watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. The fate of the universe may depend on it. And have fun, and follow your fandom.